Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Um, this video is a video I'm doing in response to another video. I just watched a clickbaity video from Film Courage that was just posted 26 minutes ago. The video is called How to Film a Movie in Seven Days. And in the picture, the little thumbnail, it has, apparently this is Stephen Shea, saying, it was easy. Then, when the video starts, they say, is it impossible to make a feature in five days? So, they've already fucking fucked their whole deal that they started with. And... Stephen Shea says, yeah, if you strap a camera to your cat and let it run for like 70 or 90 minutes, that's the length of a movie and you will have a movie. That's smug as fuck, so I don't like that. And then she says, well, you made a movie in five days. And he's like, well, it was four days, but then um, three days of doing interviews because I made a documentary about a Comic-Con and um, the event was four days. And so we filmed for four days and then we did three days of interviews. It was originally supposed to be two days of interviews, but then I called for a third day of interviews. Basically, what they are saying here is that the only way humanly possible to be able to make a movie in a week, we'll just call it a week, is if you're making a documentary on a subject that is locked in time and you only have this much time to make that movie. This is categorically false. Um, there are tons of movies that have been shot in a week. Tons of movies that have been shot in a week. There have been a lot of movies shot in a weekend. Um, I have shot feature films in a weekend. I have shot a feature film in one day on multiple occasions. At least two that I could think of right now off the top of my head. And both of those movies had distribution and were released. So before anyone starts fucking blowing that fucking smoke ring up someone's asshole, let me just fucking say that. The way you do this is planning. You need to know exactly what you're going to shoot. You need to shoot to cut. Like, you know what is going in the film. When you're going over the script as a director, you need to look at it and go, okay, this part here where they're saying this, this should be like a two shot, and then we should go to a medium, and then when he says this line, let's do a close up. Boom. This is how it's done. You know what you're shooting before you fucking go. And all those people that are like, well, what about coverage? We need a lot of coverage, you know? It's pointless and it's uneconomical. And in times when shooting is so easy now, there are so many ways to make it simple, but things cost so much more money than they've ever had. It's really important to know what the fuck you're going to shoot when you go to set. So already have your script planned out. Have your shots planned out. If you have more than one camera and more than one camera operator, it would be great to be able to set up both shots at the same time. Oh, well, what about the lighting? Figure it out. If you don't have a lot of time to do something, just get it done. Just fucking do it. Uh, well, you know what? Let's talk about coverage real quick. And I think I brought this up before. If you need to have items for coverage, just know that every time you do this, if and if you're not going to do this as B-roll, like with a, like a B-crew, or a second unit crew. If in the scene, somebody um, picks up a pen, okay? Have a shot of a pen on something and a hand grabbing it. 
just like a close up shot of that thing. If you need to have coverage of something, whatever is something that's going to happen in the scene, just shoot that and do it real quick. None of this shit takes a long time. The people who make it seem like it takes a long time are the people who have no idea what the fuck they're going to do once they do all this stuff. A lot of directors out there are really good at directing. Like, they're good at directing people, I guess. But they have no idea what the movie's going to look like. They have no idea what the edit's going to look like. They have no vision as to what their actual film is going to look like. So you end up shooting the same scene 30, 40 times from different angles, different ways, and all this other shit for coverage. It's ridiculous. If you know what you're going to do, do that thing, and then you're done. Next, um, do not be married to your script. Okay? Scripts are living, breathing creatures, and depending on the circumstances of the world, they will always change. Meaning, if you get to a location, and for some reason the location wasn't vetted properly, and now all of a sudden the location that you thought was going to be a mechanic's garage is now a veterinary clinic, just do it and figure it out. Come up. Don't sit there and go, oh, God, I can't shoot this now because this is like this. Damn it. Oh, God, to hell. Or all that other shit. If an actor shows up with a different hairstyle or a different haircut, for fuck's sake, um, after you've already been shooting, come up with a reason that they got a haircut and have them say it in passing when they come out. None of these problems are hard to the point where you wouldn't be able to finish your film. Yes, they are annoying and they are distracting, but one of the things that I think makes a director, producer um, better than most is how well they fucking work under conditions like this, how well they can solve fucking problems. And in order to shoot a film good in a short amount of time has to do with how well you can solve fucking problems. Have there been shoots where I fucking just like gave up for a minute and had to fucking go fuck off for a, like 15 minutes or something? Yes, that happens a lot. And then I figure it out and then we go back and we shoot. It's very, very easy to do. Um, I'm trying to think if, uh, there were any movies I had that went over budget because of things like this. There are only two movies that I could think of that I have made that went over budget or at least went more days than I said it was going to. And one was because um, a hard drive was destroyed. And so we had to reshoot about a, a week's worth of stuff. And another time was the producers didn't like the ending that, that I gave them as the director. And so they rewrote the script, asked me if I wanted to come back. I told them to suck a dick. And then they went and shot the new end of the film. So other than that, um, it is really easy. So the other way to do this is you need to shoot so many pages a day. And um, a lot of this is going to be dependent on how many locations you have. So if you have only three days to shoot, you better hope that you only have three locations or the locations that you have are within like a stone's throw of one another. When I was making The Brothers Cannibal, um, we got the apartment we shot in was the lead actor's apartment. He let us film in his apartment, which was great. And then um, we looked around the neighborhood and he was pretty close to an intersection. And across the street from his place, there was a little shopping center that had a laundromat in it. So I'm like, ooh, that's cool. Let's try to shoot the laundromat and I'll write the opening at the laundromat instead of whatever I had in mind. I can't even remember. And then um, there was this really cool little diner on the corner. And so I 
rewrote the end to include the diner because it was a cool location. And so now we changed the script to now be able to shoot this whole thing in one intersection. And that was a, I want to say that was a two day shoot. It might've been a three day shoot, but it wasn't longer than a weekend. Oh, and then, um, Cage Lesbos a go-go. This is another good example of a movie shot in the day. We shot this at a, um, special effects house that, um, the guy who was doing special effects for me at the time on other movies, he had this big studio space, like a warehouse. And um, he had a bunch of facades, like fake walls and shit. And so I went and looked to see what he had. And he had like, um, like an old dungeon one. He had um, a brick wall one. And he had a few other ones or something. And so I wrote the movie around the locations that he had in this place. So a good way to make sure you can make your movie before you even write the script is to already know where you're going to shoot. If you could figure all this shit out. And then the cool thing about that was we had all the facades set up in a circle. And so whenever we were shooting like, Oh, we're shooting in the dungeon and we just turned the camera. And then, yeah, we did close ups and like handheld and all that shit too. But the main camera was in the middle of the room on a tripod and we just turned and moved and turned and moved and shot where we needed to shoot. All of this stuff about things taking a long time and it's really like a tedious process to make a film and all this stuff. It can be if that's the way you're going to do it. But if you want to make a movie to make a movie, if you want to like go, look, I only have like $3,000 I want to make this movie. How am I going to do it? This is how you do it. Okay. It is possible. The majority of the movies I made were shot over weekends because a lot of the people I used and stuff worked like union gigs and they were working Monday through Friday. So the only days I could get them was on Saturday and Sunday. That's how I had to do things. And yes, I did movies that were longer. I think the longest shoot I did was 19 days. And then we had um, like two weeks of pickups and like extra shit because they got a different location and some shit. But, um, but you know, it doesn't need to be like that. It could be a very simple and easy thing. So um, that, that video was kind of snide about it, it felt like. So I just wanted to let people know in case they Google or YouTube search the name of that video. Hopefully this video comes up too and they can see another side of it. So until next time, everybody, I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.